Hi, this is Michael at TV Radio 1972, and today I am reviewing the Eton FRX2 Hand Turbine AM FM Weather Radio. I bought this at Target for $23.74 plus tax using my Target Red Card, in which I get a 5% discount on items that I buy at either any Target store or at Target.com. Normally, this radio sells for $24.99. Here's the box in front of me, and I'll show you the front of it. It has the FRX2 logo on top, picture of the radio in the middle, and the American Red Cross and Eton logos on the bottom. On the side of the radio are the dimensions, uh, 2.5 inches in length, 5.4 inches in height, and 2.5 inches in depth. It includes the FRX2 owner's manual and mini USB cable. Back of the box, you have a description of the FRX2, as well as the features in both English and Spanish. You can pause and read those. And then, there's the features again in English and Spanish on the side of the box. I'll read them. AM, FM, radio, USB, smartphone charger, solar charging, no weather band, hand crank power, LED flashlight, Glow-in-the-dark locator and headphone jack. Now what I'm going to do is take the contents out of the box. And first I'm going to show you the owner's manual. It's in three languages starting with English over here. And then French starts over here. And then Spanish starts over here. Pretty neat. USB cable right here. It's a mini USB cable. And here's the radio. Now before I describe the radio itself, I'm going to give you some size comparisons. First, the Eton FR1, which I bought a couple years ago in 2018. Right here. Pretty much the same size, uh, slightly different features on it. And then the Sanjin DT400W, which I bought a few months back. That's it for that. So I'll show you what's on the radio. I'll tell you. Um, FRX2 logo on top. An LCD display right below it. You have a battery indicator and it shows the time. Below that is a band selector switch, cell selector switch right here. AM, FM, weather, band, and cell. You have to be careful how you move this because sometimes... The tuning will move with it. That's kind of a nuisance to me, but that's what it is. By the way, tuning wheel here. An Eton button here, which I can long press to set the time while it's off. And then I long press, press it again, and I can set the hour and minute. Now, if I long press Eton again, I put the tuning wheel... In any direction, I can set the alarm. I press it to set the minute and hour. Then I can use the tuning wheel. Either I want it off or on. I'll leave it off, and that's it. And over here is your on-off switch, which operates as your volume control as well. So, that's pretty much it. Oh, and the speaker grill, pretty much the same as the FR1, which probably means that the speaker is between an inch and an inch and a quarter. And it's actually a bit on the tinny side, in my opinion. It's 
not as good as the FR1. On the side of the radio, you have feet, little feet to stand the radio on its side. Battery door here with a screw. I unscrew it, and I find a uh, square-looking 3.7 volt, 1,000 milliamp hour battery in there that is replaceable through a proprietary uh, connection that's connected to the battery. So uh, you need to have the right connection to replace this battery within the radio. And over here is a place to put your lanyard, although it didn't come with one. On the back of the radio, you have this dynamo hand crank. Pretty neat. And on the side, you have a 10-inch antenna here. Solar panel next to it. And on top, the um, on-off button for the flashlight. Shines pretty bright. Now, on the top of the radio, you have... Your LED flashlight with the glow-in-dark indicator right here. And then on the bottom, you have this protective rubber jacket here. With your USB charging jack. Your mini USB jack to charge the radio. This The one on the left is for cell phones. And a headphone jack on no low-level hiss. I'm surprised. It sounds pretty good at low levels, but... The problem with it is sometimes the headphones will go from really low to really loud in rather a short turn, so be careful when listening on headphones. Now, what I'm going to do next is go through some band scans, starting with the AM. Now, AM is 520 to 1710 kilohertz. And you can tune it a few ways. You can either use the tuning wheel to tune like this, or you can tune every 10, excuse me, 100 kilohertz by pressing the ETOM button like this. And that's a neat feature. You can fast tune it. So right now, I'm going to start with 540 WBWD, Islip, New York, about 50 miles. That's on 540. On this radio alone, it's pretty weak, but it does wake up the signal with a Turk antenna. It reacts well. Have to be quick because of the music, but it works very well. I'm going to try WYCC Bridgeport, Connecticut. That's about 55 miles at 1,000 watts. I'm going to try that one, too. It also brings in the noise, too. You hear that uh, noise... So, there must be some sort of noise that's beyond my control here. Yeah, you know, I, I, I do know for a fact that there are more than two teams that know Adam Gaze is a terrible coach. That's why when Forbes magazine runs these richest American guys lists, and they list somebody at earning $95 million last year, the IRS. This is WNYH, Huntington, New York. That's about 38 miles at 25,000 watts during the day, low power at night. I'll bring a loop in for... Pretty neat. I like the uh, signal indicator here on the upper right. It shows the battery indicator, the signal strength indicator, and the frequency. 
WABC New York, by the way. Engine transmission and much more can become a thing of the... And I would be like, you know what? I think you're right. I feel the same way. I've been feeling it too. And then he was like, okay, let's sit down and talk about it. And we sat down and we kind of threw out the old version. No trade-offs. Right now, get up to 90 days of unlimited free on business plans when you switch via bill credit. Stop it. their operating license. The American company had challenged Transport for London's decision in late 2019 not to renew its private car vehicle. Everybody, you're looking live at Fansville, a college football utopia. Fansville. And it's hard to know for sure what any, any individual would do on the Supreme Court, but to the extent one was following in Justice Scalia's footsteps, This is WGHT, Pompton Lakes, New Jersey, only 12 miles, it's 1,000 watts, a little on the directional side. Pretty neat. Second harmonic of 77 WABC. 770 times 2, 1540. Mainly happens during the day. WPYJ708 Clifton, New Jersey, a travel information station that airs no weather radio. WQBX398 Patterson, New Jersey, another travel information station that airs weather. Let me see if I can get WRCR right now, which is 1700 from Ramapo, New York, about 20 miles away. Yeah, it's coming in. WQFG 689, Jersey City, New Jersey, operating at 100 watts through a special temporary authority, airs mainly information including COVID-19, just saying. And that is all for the AM. As far as AM reception is concerned, um, as far as AM reception, um, it's pretty decent, uh, but it does react better to a loop, and I've noticed on some frequencies, 
there's this sort of gain, kind of this slow gain. I believe it's called automatic gain control. I've noticed that on a number of frequencies. But anyhow, AM during the day, 36 stations, 26 okay to good in 10 week. At night, I was able to get 85 stations and either of them without using a loop. So the band does kind of wake up at night, but it does do better with a loop as well. Got 85 stations, but 44 were okay to good and 41 weak signals. It could have possibly just been a good night when I did the test. But um, that's pretty much it for AM reception, so it's pretty decent on AM. Now let's go to FM. Now for FM, it's 87.5 to 108.0, and using the ETOM button, I can actually go in 1 megahertz step, so that's a pretty neat feature. So I'm going to start with WNYZLP New York City, but it does sound rather distorted, and I'll show you. Yeah, it's very distorted. Nice station ID. Wow, I got another station ID. WNYE, New York City. Size since yesterday, NPR's Eric Westervelt reports multiple wind-driven blazes are forcing a lot of people in parts of Napa and Sonoma counties. W236CH, Fort Greene, New York. Only 27 watts. It's an FM translator. W248CG, Jersey City, New Jersey. That is a translator out of Jersey City, New Jersey. Uh, Radio Canto Con Nuevo. I sometimes get WALKFM, Patchogue, New York, about 60 miles away, but right now I'm getting the translator. Executives had 
to grind and work his way to that position. When you feel like it up, feel like it. In other, you know, infectious diseases, because of what we're doing with wearing the mask and social distancing. Well, I'm getting 99.9 right now, so it is picking up right now. Uh, WEZM Bridgeport Connect, about 55 miles away. Pretty neat. WHUD, Peekskill, New York. WKXW, New Jersey, 101.5, Trenton, New Jersey, that's over 50 miles away. Coming in pretty weak, but that is WEBE Westport, Connecticut. That's, I believe, around 46 miles away. So, yeah, it's pretty decent on FM. As a matter of fact, I'll give you an FM reception report as well. I did get 52 stations, 39 okay to good, and 11 weak signals. So, so far, the radio has been pretty decent, but... I'm going to go to the weather band next and then wrap it up. KZZ31, Harriston, New Jersey, about 25 miles away. That is 162.50. For Tuesday, rip current risk high. Surf heights around four feet. Thunderstorm potential none. Weather mostly cloudy. Patchy fog. A chance of showers. High temperature mid 70s. Winds south. And that is it. That is KWO 35 at 162.55. In New York City, that's my nearest weather station, about 10 to 15 miles away. And that is all. That is all for the band scans. Now I have my final thoughts. Final thoughts are um, AM, FM, and weather band reception is pretty decent. And a uh, Turk antenna or any other loop antenna could really wake up the AM band. Sorry for the interference on the AM band. It just happens sometimes. But, AM, FM, and weather band are pretty good. If I can get both channels 5 and 7 on my weather radio, that means it's a pretty good weather radio. So, I like that. I like the fact that there's a signal indicator on the radio. So, that's pretty neat as well. 
And um, I like that. Now, I'll tell you what I don't like about this radio. I don't like this band selector cell switch here, which can sometimes move with the tuning wheel. They really didn't implement it that good. So I didn't like that. And also the fact that the speaker's a little on the tinny side. So I didn't really like that either. Uh, they could have done a little better with the volume. And the LCD display could have been a little bolder as well. Like the, I like the display on the FR1 better. But I like the fact that there is uh, solar panel charging. I like the flashlight. The, it, the antenna, the 10-inch antenna, does a pretty decent job on FM and weather band. So I have no complaints. I like the Dynamo Crank as well. And those are my final thoughts. As far as a rating is concerned, you know what? I'll give it a 7 out of 10 because um, it's a pretty, fairly solid radio. A decent to good weather radio for its price tag of $25. I kind of wish it was only 20 but, you know, you can't have everything, you know. But... $25 for this is not a bad price. If you can get one for $20 to $25, uh, you can go and get it. Now, one thing that this radio doesn't have is weather alert function, which the FR1 has. So if you're expecting to get weather alerts on here, do a beep and all that, forget it. You're not going to get out of this radio. But otherwise, I'm satisfied with it. So... I hope you enjoyed this video. If you liked the video, give it a thumbs up and feel free to subscribe to my channel. Have a good week, everyone. Stay safe and God bless. Bye-bye.